tutorial is going to be writing in automation and performing automation in Pro Tools. If you haven't seen my automation lecture, under the lectures playlist, check that out. Uh, and we're going to be delving into the Pro Tools techniques uh, and workflows in this video. So in my automation lectures video, I talked about writing in automation versus performing automation. So we'll look into penciling in automation versus performing automation. We'll look at penciling it in first. So first thing that we want to do is get to our automation line in the edit window. Under the track name, we have controls for input monitoring, solo mute, record. And right under that, there's a little drop down that says waveform. If you don't see that, the track is probably shrunk down to a small size like this. You can move your cursor until you see that little crosshair, expand the track as such, and you'll be able to see that. So we'll click on that drop down, and over here we have our automation parameters that we can control. So we'll start with volume. So that's typically the most common. And we'll see this line appear. So there are two ways we can write in automation. First one, the first one we can do is we could take our hand tool and along this line we could click. We could click to add points and create a wacky automation curve so that when I play back you'll be able to see this fader moving up and down. See that? I'm not even touching it. Go back into this window. Command Z to undo those automation points. Now there's one thing I want you to be wary of when you're making automation points. See if I make a point and drag it it'll affect everything beyond that point. So, typically what I'll do is create one before, one after, so then nothing before and after my automation is affected. The second way to pencil that in would be using this pencil tool. Uh, here we could kind of draw smoother curves, might be a little bit more realistic. And you'll see underneath this pencil tool, we have a few different options. We're going to focus on freehand, which is the technique I just examined. And then line, say if we want to straighten this out a little bit, we could use that line parameter to adjust. Next would be writing in automation in real time. And if you haven't seen my video again, I talk about the automation modes. And we could find those modes right underneath this drop down right here it says read typically the default automation mode in any DAW is read where it reads whatever automation is written off it won't follow any automation uh, now let's look at touch touch is probably the most useful so in touch mode it's gonna act as if it were in read mode, reading whatever automation I had until I grab the fader or parameter, then it'll start writing in automation. So I'm going to split this window just so you could see exactly what's going on. I put it in touch mode, you could do it down here or actually on the fader in the, in the mix window. So I'm going to play. I'll pencil in a couple automation marks. I'll play in touch mode. You'll see the fader follow this automation point, and once I grab the fader, it'll start writing in automation until I let go. Then it'll go back into essentially read mode and read whatever automation is there. Uh, and I don't have to record anything. All I do is I simply hit play. You'll see this fader following that automation curve, and I can grab it and start writing in my own automation. And then once I let go, it's going to follow whatever automation line is already there. So I'm going to let go, and you can see it jumps right back. Now I stop it, playback, 
and watch this fader. It'll start following that curve. Say I don't like something, maybe I want this a little bit smoother, I can grab it again, continue, adjust my automation, let go, and it'll read. And again, this isn't just volume, you can do this with mute and pan right off the bat. I'll show you in another video how to add different effect parameters to this drop down so you can automate effects as well. The next automation mode would be latch. Very similar to touch mode, the only difference is once I let go of that fader, it'll continuing writing automation where I left off until I stop the playback. So, we're in latch mode, I'm going to be working with the same track here. I'll expand this a little bit so you get more of a visual. We're playing back. See this fader, it's following our automation curve. I'm going to grab it, write a new automation, and I'm going to drop it down so you can see once I let go, instead of jumping back up to where it was like it did in touch mode, I let go and it latches on and continues writing in that automation until I hit the spacebar. Then it reserves whatever automation was previously written. Lastly is write mode, and write mode you want to be careful with because essentially as soon as I hit playback, it's writing in new automation wherever that is. Uh, I could adjust it, leave it, and it's writing. So when I stop it, you can see it reserves whatever automation was after it, but if I'm in write mode and I start it again, it's going to start writing in that new automation. So again, you want to be careful. You can see in Pro Tools, it'll toggle out of write mode after the fact. That's the basics of automation in Pro Tools. In the next video, I'll show you how to add effect parameters as an automation option.